Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Year-end reminder. Expanded tax benefits help individuals and businesses give to charity during 2020. IR 2020-278, December 18th, 2020, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today explained how expanded tax benefits can help both individuals and businesses give to charity before the end of this year. So obviously taxes are not the reason we primarily want to give to the charity, but if we want to give to charity and get a tax benefit or look into whether or not we can have a tax benefit uh, with giving to charity, then that would be the time to do it as the year is clearly closing up here. So the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security, or CARES Act, enacted last spring, includes four temporary tax changes that are designed to help people and businesses who give to charity this year. Here is a rundown of these key changes. New deduction for people who don't itemize. Individuals who elect to take the standard deduction generally cannot claim a deduction for their charitable contributions. However, the CARES Act permits these individuals to claim a limited deduction on their 2020 federal income tax return for cash contributions made to certain qualified charitable organizations and still claim the standard deduction. Nearly 9 in 10 taxpayers now take the standard deduction and could potentially qualify. So in the past, the and still currently, you can deduct typically charitable deductions on the itemized deductions. However, in order to get a benefit for those itemized deductions, including the charity, they would have to be greater than the standard deduction. Less people have that, uh, are able to go over the standard deduction with their itemized deductions due to the fact that in an attempt to simplify the code, the standard deduction was increased a few years ago. So everybody gets a higher standard deduction, which is probably good uh, for in general for everybody because, you know, you get a higher threshold or a higher standard deduction no matter what. But that also results in less people that are going to itemize and less people getting an advantage of the uh, charitable contributions, therefore. So now there's an above the line, basically, contribution a deduction for adjusted gross income. In other words, typically a Schedule 1 Part 2 deduction, but this one's actually on the first page of the 1040, and you'll see it, you know, deducted before you get to the AGI deduction. It's only $300, and you have to have cash uh, contributions uh, for it. In other words, typically if you, if you donate some property, then typically that's not going to be for the above the line, but that might qualify for the itemized deductions. Therefore, if you're working with people, or you're doing this yourself for and you are, are having a standard deduction as opposed to itemizing, then you still may be able to give at least up to the $300 to charity as long as it's going to a qualified organization and it's cash uh, type of contribution like check, cash, credit card, then uh, you may still be able to get and take advantage of a uh, deduction. So nearly 9 in 10 taxpayers now take the standard deduction and could potentially qualify. Under this change, these individuals can claim an quote, above the line, end quote, deduction of up to $300 for cash contributions made to qualifying charities during 2020. The maximum above the line deduction is $150 for married individuals filing separate returns. So it's $300 basically for most filing statuses, including single or head of household and married. So you would think it would kind of double for married, but no, it's going to be the same amount uh, for singled or married. And then you've got uh, the 150 if they're going to take the married filing separate. So if you go with married filing separate, which is a more, you know, less common filing status, then uh, you would have the 150. But it doesn't go down to 150 if you go to single as opposed to married. Though cash contributions to most charitable organizations qualify, those made either to supporting organizations or to establish or maintain a donor ad advised fund do not. Cash contributions carried forward from prior years do not qualify, nor do most contributions to charitable remainder trusts. So uh, it has to be to a qualified organization. If you got to carry forward from the prior year that you couldn't take because of like an AGI limitation, then you can't really take those typically, even though they're cash contributions, because mainly you have to make the contribution in the current year. In general, a donor advised fund is a fund or account in which a donor can, because of being a donor, advise the fund on how to distribute or invest amounts held in the fund. So if you have control over the fund, then the IRS is basically saying we're not going to give you a charitable uh, deduction because now you know you haven't really given in the sense that you no longer have control if you have some kind of control over the funds that you have then 
given to. A supporting organization is a charity that carries out its exempt purposes by supporting other exempt organizations, usually other public charities. See publication 526 for more information on the types of organizations that qualify. Cash contributions include those made by check, credit card, or debit card, as well as amounts incurred by an individual for unreimbursed out-of-pocket expenses in connection with the individual's volunteer services to a qualifying charitable organization. Cash contributions don't include the value of volunteer services, securities, household items, or other property. So with the $300, you can't, the volunteer services, usually those aren't going to be deductible uh, no matter what. So if you're volunteering, and you're giving non-professional service, like you're, you're, you know, serving meals or something like that, then uh, that's non-professional and you usually don't get a, a charitable deduction for that. But also with the above the line deduction, you can't donate property, which is something that you may be able to get a deduction in if you are itemizing and taking it on the itemized deductions as well as possibly uh, securities. So up to 100% limit on eligible cash contributions made by, itemize, by, by itemizers in 2020. So let's get down to the itemizers now. These are people that are taking advantage or are able to take the itemized deduction because their itemized deductions are greater than the standard deduction. If that is the case, then their charitable deductions would be on the itemized deductions. But there are some restrictions, some, some caps on how much you could put into charity. And there's basically been some adjustments in terms of those caps. Now, most people, uh, probably the caps were not really restricting them because, you know, most people can't put enough money in to really clear the cap usually in any case. But uh, if you can, then this might be the year to do it. And, uh, and there might be some, and, you know, if you do have a, you know, the money to put into charity or some other property to put it into charity that would be su substantial or over the adjusted gross income caps, then those caps could be adjusted here. And that, that might give you some incentive to, you know, do that. Here. So subject to certain limits, individuals who itemize may claim a deduction for charitable contributions they make to qualifying charitable organizations. These, these limits generally range from 20% to 60% of an individual's adjusted gross income or AGI and vary by the type of contribution and type of charitable organization. So we got these caps that could happen in terms of how much you can put into a charitable organization somewhere between 20 and 60% generally which in and of itself is usually fairly high, meaning you'd have to put in at least over 20, and oftentimes the caps are higher than that to charity before you'd be restricted from being able to itemize the deduction. Uh, so that's what we're talk talking about here, generally those caps. How much can we put in before we hit the AGI cap? So for example, a cash contribution made by an individual to a qual qualifying public charity generally is limited to 60% of the individual's AGI. So that's a fairly high, you know, 60% of your income or adjusted gross income, basically income. Excess contributions may be carried forward for up to five tax years. So if you put over that amount, then typically you can then carry it forward and, and be able to take it next year. Meaning if you hit the cap, then normally you can then carry it forward to five years and be able to take the deduction as long as you're not hitting the cap, you know, in the following year and carry and, you know, continue carrying it forward until you can use the charitable contributions. So the CARES Act permits electing individuals to apply an increased limit of up to 100% of their AGI for qualifying contributions, quote, increased individual limit, end quote. The election is made on a contribution by con contribution basis. Qualified contributions are limited to those made in cash during calendar year 2020 to qualify in charitable organizations. So it's got to be made in cash in 2020 to, to qualify in charitable organizations. As with the new limited deduction for non-itemizers, cash contributions to most charitable organizations qualify, but once again, those made either to supporting organizations or to establish or maintain a donor-invested fund do not, nor, uh, nor do most cash contributions to charitable remainder trusts. Unless an individual makes the election for any given qualified contribution, the usual percentage limit applies. So you want to make sure that if you're dealing with someone or if you so, or if yourself you're going over that cap, then you want to make the election where applicable here so that you can take advantage of the uh, tax break in the current year as opposed to possibly being capped off and having to, to roll over the excess to the following year. So uh, most tax software is being updated for that as well. So it might 
be useful or helpful in order to apply that. But if you are advising anybody about uh, charitable contributions who might be concerned about the AGI cap as to whether they can deduct it, then this is something to keep in mind. Keep in mind an individual's other allowed charitable contributions deductions reduce the maximum amount allowed under this election. Individuals who, who would like to take advantage of the increased individual limit must make either elections with Form 1040 or Form 1040-SR. Corporate limit increased to 25% of taxable income. The CARES Act permits C corporations to apply an increased limit of 25% of taxable income increased corporate limit for charitable contributions of cash they make to eligible charities during the 2020 calendar year. The maximum allowable deduction is usually limited at 10% of a corporation's taxable income. So same thing on the corporation side of things, there's typically gonna be a cap. That being the 10%, they've boosted that up to the 25% for C corporations. Here again, the increased corporate limit does not automatically apply. C corporations must elect uh, application of the increased uh, corporate limit on a contribution by contribution basis. Increased limits on amounts deductible by businesses for certain donated food inventory. Businesses donated food inventory that is eligible for the enhanced deduction for contributions for the care of the ill, needy, and infants are eligible for increased deduction limits. For contributions made in 2020, the limit for these contribution deductions is increased from 15% to 25%. For C corporations, the 25% limit is based on their taxable income. For other businesses, including sole proprietorships, partnerships, and S corporations, the limit is based on their aggregate net income for the year they all trade uh, for the year from all trades or businesses from which the contributions were made. A special method for computing the enhanced deduction continues to apply, as uh, do food quality standards and other requirements. Keep good records. The IRS reminds both individuals and businesses that special record keeping rules apply to any taxpayer claiming a charitable contribution deduction. Usually this includes obtaining a receipt or acknowledgement letter from the charity before filing a return or retaining a concealed check or credit card receipt. For donations of property, additional record keeping rules may apply including filing a form 28 or 8283 and obtaining a qualified appraisal. So notice, obviously, when you when you give to charity and take the deduction, you're taking the deduction on the tax return and you could then be subject to an audit or you have to always be thinking that, you know, in the event of an audit, you want to make sure that you could support uh, the charitable deductions that were taken. And an audit could happen, you know, at least up to three years from the point in time that the return was filed. And so you want to have the documentation in terms of cancel check, if that would be applicable or information from the charitable organization of itself to support uh, the gifts that and charities that was given. The additional details on how to apply the percentage limits described above and a description of the record keeping rules for substantiating gifts to charity. See publication 526 charitable contributions. There's a link to that here. It's available on, of course, the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. For more information about other coronavirus related tax relief, visit irs.gov forward slash coronavirus. And there's a link to the publication 526 here. There'll be a link to this in the description.